Okay, Marley, Marley. I know, I know. Hi there. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> My dog is being a little crazy. Oh. There we go. Okay. Sorry. Oh, what kind of dog is it? <laughs> she's an English setter. Oh. And she's about 15 or 16 months, so she's still oh, just a baby. <laughs> so and she thinks she's a lap dog. Oh yes. <laughs> She was once. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> as far as she's concerned, that has not stopped. <laughs> Sweet. Hi, Miss Susan. Hey, Courtney. How are you? Good, good. Who's your friend? This is Marley. She's an Marley. English her. She's still a puppy. <laughs> So yeah, all the room we have in, in this room, she wants to be right in my lap. Of course, <laughs> yes. Mine would like to be in my lap too, but she weighs about 90 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this one needs to learn she's not a lap dog, but we're not there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, when you take them in your lap as a puppy, they never forget it. Exactly, exactly. You've, you've already created the problem. <laughs> right. Yeah, we just uh, got her, um, oh goodness, in June, I guess. It was May or June we got her. And so she, yeah. she is acclimated. She thinks she's ours. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, and she is. She is ours. I mean, we're, we're kind of yeah, crazy of about her. Is. Yes, yes. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Oh, very well. Good, good. I'll, I'll give everybody another minute or two to join. And Molly, you're leading tonight, right? What Stacy tells me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you're not, you are now. <laughs> I am now. I guess so. I guess I better figure something out. <laughs> Go along. <laughs> Seal, did you get my text message? I found the cookbook. Oh, good. It's me that wants it. Oh, you're the one that wants it? Yes. Oh, okay. I have, well, an idea. I have it. I good. found it. Good. I was lucky. Yes. Yes, I it was. I haven't you in on my idea yet, Courtney, but I have an idea. Oh. Okay. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Oh, oh, Marley's gonna stand up here and see everybody. So sweet. Yeah. What the dog's name? Marley. Mar okay. Yeah, we, she came with the name, but we just say that we named her after Marley Richardson. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, she. <laughs> Guess the seal was not able to hear us. Yeah. I'll get something working. The Snowy Notes bundle. It's going to include both arms, the paper pattern as well. All right. Well, we may have a few more people join. I don't know. Seal's probably going to log back in. Um, so, Molly, whenever you want to take it away. Oh, or I was told you're opening with prayer. That, I that will was the deal. Prayer. I can totally okay. do that. Okay. Right. That was the deal. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. Oh, Marley. <laughs> let's pray. <laughs> Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this time together. We pray that you would guide our discussion and that you would uh, just move uh, in us and among us, O oh Lord, and that um, all the thoughts and insights that we offer tonight would be all to your glory. First, in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going back to... The book to the study that we started with that I heard Ty went 
rogue on, so I cannot go and do my own thing because <laughs> I am not that good. Um, but I'm doing chapter four, and <laughs> I um, came up oh. with chapter four. It's hope really does float. Mm -hmm. Do y'all remember the movie with Sandra Bullock called Hope Floats? Mm -hmm. It yeah. is one of my absolute favorite movies. And so that's what led me to this. I wish I could say that it was something biblical or, or spiritual that spoke to me about this chapter, but and it is a good chapter. And I did read through the other ones and I did like this, do like this chapter, but, but the Hope Float, I really love that movie. And it has some really good quotes when I was thinking about the movie. And there was one that made me think of Ty that I had to tell him. And it's, um, a quote that says, I like all of God's creatures. I just like some of them better stuffed. <laughs> and so that's, <laughs> that is my Ty Cowles quote for the night to lead off our Bible study. <laughs> hanging um, on a wall. Hanging on a wall <laughs> stuffed. Yes. So, um, now we will talk about the chapter. So hope really does float. Oh, I knew that we would have a a surprise visit real quick. Okay. Did Daddy want to talk to John? Yes, go on. I told you you're not going to come out. Go. No, no, you didn't. Okay, we'll go. You can, can, I set, go. can I see if my ice cream's ready? Yeah. Why can't I see if my ice cream's ready? This is why I have not logged on to very many of these. <laughs> these. Sorry. I'm offended. He's offended. Okay. So, uh, now I've lost my whole train of thought. Um, We're talking about hope floats. Hope floats. We're not going to talk about hope floats anymore. We're going to talk about First Corinthians. Um, you tell me what if you want. Does anybody else have a copy of this book to follow through, or do you want me to? I don't think anyone has a copy. I don't think anybody is. Okay. Okay. So Paul is um, reading his letters to the Corinthians, and what made me think about this is what we're going through now in our time in the world, I'm not going to get into it and I'm not going to talk about the mask debate and whether or not to wear a mask or whether or not Corona is real or not real and all of it. But it did made me, make me think of, My skin was good. did make me think of here he is and he's gone and he, he's taught the, them about Jesus and about God and he's left and he's given them some time to do it on their own. And what did they do? They messed it up. And that made me think about where we are in the world right now. And we've seen what Corona and has done. And we went through our lockdown and we went through the time and we followed the guidelines. And then we got set free for a little time. And what did we do? We messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't follow the rules and we didn't social distance and here we are back in a pickle and so that's you know what kind of was speaking to me on um about this chapter and so the chapter goes on and it's talking about um how paul goes back and he's talking about the resurrection and it breaks it down um it's talking about the 15th chapter and um, it says in this mount manner doubt is not the opposite of faith doubt as saint augustine wrote is actually an element of faith doubt helps us to grow and advance in our understanding of the divine presence in the world the opposite of faith is hopelessness and in this session we will learn that one of the foundations of hope in this life is the promise of the resurrection so it goes goes on in first Corinthians 15 Paul is discussing um, the importance of the Christian faith and the Bible I use is the message because it's a very teen Bible and it works well with the teenagers so in reading first Corinthians and adults as well and adults it does it does work well with adults uh, hold on got to get to it Can anybody please jump in and tell me your thoughts and help me out a little bit? So Paul gets there and he's talking get back to 
and he's talking back to them and saying, going back over about the resurrection. And this is, he says, if there is no resurrection, there is no living Christ. And face it, if there's no resurrection for Christ, everything we've told you is smoke and mirrors. And everything you've staked your life on is smoke and mirrors. Not only that, but we would be guilty of telling a string of barefaced lies about God. All these affidavits we passed on to you, verifying that God raised up Christ, sheer fabrication, if there's no resurrection. And that really mm. struck me. I was like, wow, that's... That's where I was looking at 13 and 14, where you started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There. And I, I mean, I had a conversation with my mom not too long ago, just that I think about all the people in the world. I mean, just those that are close, but those everywhere that have no faith. And mm -hmm. the idea, I didn't have somebody else to share this with or to lean on or to give me what I needed in the middle of, I mean, this. Right. I'm so for those that are missing that. Mm -hmm. Because if those of us that believe have moments of doubt, I can only imagine what it must be like for those that have nothing. Right. Right. And, and like for me, the idea that somebody could say, oh, he's not real, or that's, you know, your faith is for nothing. Mm -hmm. is just unbelievable to me right yeah um, it, it's to say that i mean he died for our sins and to, to take that one act out then you're taking everything essentially you know that it's all smoke and mirrors if you if you stake your life on that then everything you're saying is a lie. Um, so that, I mean, that's a huge act. And then, so that made me think about going back to what's happening today in the world. And, you know, we go, you hear so many different people saying, believe this, don't believe that. Not just about Corona politics. I mean, cancer, everything. Mm -hmm. And we're pulled in so many different directions of who do we believe? What, what study do we believe for this? What study do we believe for that? And of course, I don't have the answer. I don't know who does have the answer, but knowing that. If I, if I could jump in, I, um, yeah. the think, think of why we celebrate Easter morning and why we say he is alive mm -hmm. because his resurrection was validation that the father accepted his offer, his, his sacrifice. And in him being raised up, he was the first fruits. He paved the way for all of us to be able to experience eternal life. I mean, that's the, that was the final act of the, the gospel is Jesus being raised up. And, and that's where our eternal hope comes from. So whether it's coronavirus or cancer or, or stroke or whatever, that's how we can fight the life's hardest battles and still maintain a sense of hope. It's because we know our future. It's, it's, it's been determined and, um, I, I know that, that the coronavirus has, has instilled a tremendous amount of fear in people and people have died and rightfully so that, that puts an end to our earthly existence, mm -hmm. but it is simply a, a transition point to something far greater. And because of that, we can have hope, but just mm -hmm. the point he's making is think if God had not accepted Jesus' sacrifice and did not raise him. Our faith would be tremendously different than it is today. Right. And so that's a yeah. huge part of the gospel message. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, along those lines, I was thinking, um, so I, I was having a conversation with someone earlier today and they were telling me that um, they, they had not been really taking this whole, the, the virus situation very seriously. And then they knew someone that got the virus 
and mm -hmm. all of a sudden like they're kind of realizing like oh wait no this is this is for real this you know this could kill one of right i love and i think you know similarly with our faith the you know that these aren't just like um sort of bullet points that we believe or or you know like it's not just doctrine that we we espouse but it's an experience it's something that is like near and dear to us and that's how we're able to say that that we believe and that we know of that that hope and you know that we know it's not in vain because we've experienced who jesus is and who god is you know it's not just sort of um you know it's not in the abstract for us it's it's something that we've truly experienced Right. So that goes on to Paul's next point is he says, so they're questioning, you know, so he says the resurrection and, you know, if it did not happen, you know, what would it be? And then he goes on to say, like Ty said, we can question, but we know that in the end we're going to be with God again. And so he says, um, when we lose a loved one, the hope of eternal life and resurrection can be a great comfort, but usually not immediately. You know, our first response is why, especially when it's an unexpected death and we question and we get mad. He said, only if I had only done this or that differently, you know, we, we ask all these questions then only after passing a time after the shock then the promise of the resurrection and the reunion come a source of comfort so to know that there is that eternal life and then he goes on to talk about the baptism and uh, the expression of getting baptized for the dead uh, in the message it says if we all get out of Christ is a little inspiration for a few short years, we're a pretty sorry lot. But the truth is that Christ has been raised up the first in a long legacy of those who are going to leave the cemeteries. Well, I keep going back to the If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are all men. Or we are of all men most to be pitied. Mm -hmm. Because like we put it as right now and how things are for us in this life, then you would be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> this is the farthest you're going to go. And that there are the, the daily doubts or the things that people have throughout that can question or you wonder those questions, like you said before, like why this or why now or why me or why these people. But at the same time, underneath the have that faith that you you really know the answer you really know that he's got it. i don't get it but i know he's got it mm -hmm. and so there are those days you wonder if it's not real well yeah i mean we're all in trouble but i'm in trouble right I mean, but it's real and he's got it right you can get caught up in the the questioning and the getting scared and the living and not to say that it's I mean of course we are human and you are going to do that but knowing that there is knowing that there is that certainty that There's we are going here. not the certainty there is not certainty that's the wrong word knowing that there is hope and I remember when my grandmother passed away, I didn't cry and I was younger and I thought, this is so strange that I'm not crying. Of course I was sad, but I knew that she was at peace and I knew that she was a Christian woman and I knew she was going to heaven. And so I wasn't sad for her. So going on, Paul, um, talks about the baptism. I keep getting these little visitors coming out to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just keep coming and coming. Uh, and 
in verse 38, he says, some skeptic is sure to ask, show me how resurrection works. Give me a diagram, draw me a picture. What does this resurrection body look like? If you look at this question closely, you realize how absurd it is. There are no diagrams for this kind of thing. And he talks about the seed. And I love this um, visual. There's no visual likeness between a seed and a plant. You could never guess what a tomato would look, look like by looking at a tomato seed. What we plant in the soil and what we grow out of it doesn't look anything alike. The dead body that we bury in the ground and the resurrection body that comes from it will be dramatically different. You will notice that the variety of bodies is stunning, but there are different kinds of seed. There are different kinds of bodies, humans, animals, birds, fish. You get a hint of the diversity of the resurrection glory by looking at the diversity of bodies, not only on earth, but in the skies. Who can imagine what the resurrection plants will be like? I love that visual of you know, planting a seed and what your resurrection body is going to look like. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's especially meaningful when, you know, we think of, of people who, you know, when they died, like, are not whole, you know, that have mm -hmm. experienced decline and, you know, and the way that we remember them, the way we think about them is not the way that they will be in heaven. Right. I think they can be whole and happy and joyful and, um, and well, even like those of us who, you know, like, are in good shape when we die. I mean, there's still some sort of brokenness that we carry and that's not what we'll look like. Can I say hi, Mama? Right. Mama. I, I go back to also, I, just, I know everybody's imagery is kind of different. Uh, it's funny that no matter how old I get, there's something that can kind of, I guess, spark a change or just make me see things a little bit differently or have a different perspective. But after we read The Great Divorce, see some of the imagery in that story the idea of what our physical bodies will be like and how different our presence will be there you know i don't have to worry about abs one day <laughs> it's <laughs> not a <laughs> right it's just kind of, it's just kind of neat to see that it, it is something that we can speculate we can imagine all we want but we have no idea we just know that it's it's going to be what it's supposed to be. You know, I, I think you're right. It, uh, it is speculation, but the, the Bible does hint in a few places as to what it might be like in terms of our um, resurrected body. Um, in, in Romans 8, it talks about creation groans for... Uh, a, a time where uh, it doesn't experience the decay that we see uh, in Eden. Uh, what we what it describes is everything's kind of perfect, <laughs> and then comes the curse, and we see where uh, thistles or and and thorns or grow, and and um, we have to work for our brow, and we uh, fight with the soil, and and women experience. Um, pain at childbirth and then we see references in the old testament where it says there will be a day when the lamb and the lion lie down which suggests that there will be peace within the animal community we see in uh, um, revelations 21 when it talks about new jerusalem where it says that um, there will be no more pain and no more death no more decay so we experience something that, that doesn't fight the same set of conditions like disease and whatnot that, that we do here on this earth. I mean, it, it really does almost suggest a return to Eden in terms of a resurrected body, almost like Adam and Eve was originally designed to never die and it was sin that brought death to their existence. Uh, physical death and, and until sin was dealt with a, a spiritual death. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that uh, I'll be able to run faster than I ever have been, <laughs> kick a football farther than I ever did. 
Uh, it's kind of wrapped up, Paul says, or the chapter says, perhaps mystery is the best explanation we have. As we face life and death concerns, we deal with the real losses of loved ones. Sometimes the best we can do is nudge people in directions of hope. We don't know how to explain it. We don't have words for what God does for us after we die. But we believe with all our hearts that God will take care of us and that death is not the final word. And I think, I mean, there's a lot of comfort in those words. There's a lot of... Um, I don't. There is a lot of mystery in that, and we don't know. I mean, I'm a pretty person, but I just can't. I cannot have faith that there is something better for me. I believe that's what will be, and I can't imagine not having that. Yeah, um, it's very hard. Oh, Stacy, you might remember Seal. My best friend lost her daughter. It's been mm -hmm. two years now to brain cancer. She was four. And we were sitting talking about it. And I told her, I said, you know, God will get you through this. And she's with him. And she said, I'm so tired of people telling me that. I just don't believe in it right now. I don't. And she had no faith. And she, I mean, and I don't know. I don't, I mean, she watched her suffer for a year. I can't say. I, I wish I, I really hope and pray that I could say that I would be strong through that. But I, I, I don't know what I would do if I lost one of my children. I really don't. And it hurts my heart for her now after the fact that she doesn't believe that her daughter's in heaven. I, I do truly believe that afterwards I would know that my children were in heaven. But I just, I couldn't imagine living life not thinking that and knowing and having that certainty and I don't know, it's just something be it's just, it, I can't understand, I can't, it, breaks my heart so there is comfort to me knowing that she is there because she had so many people love her and pray for her and and I believe that her mom knows she just was hurting and in pain but it's hard um, that lost me on my train of thought again you know my train my, my train derails a lot we're talking about that girl and then and everybody else who uh, who their eternal life is in heaven. We're talking about the body. Uh, right here in, in chapter 15, it says, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spirit is not first, but the natural and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was on the earth made of dust. And the second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also there, those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of heaven in man. The heavenly man, excuse me. So what it, what that tells me is, is that, you know, what we know of our earthly existence is corruption and decay and Christ being resurrected to a, a life-giving spirit and being the first fruit and paving the way. Um, we take on the uncorruptible body of heaven. Here. And that's here. something that uh, I hope that, 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 that lady you were referring to 
would find joy and, and hope in, in her daughter. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's our future as believers. It's going to be a glorious day when we aren't fighting the issues that we fight here on this earth. On a different note, I did like how Paul said, you know, he didn't pretend that he was perfect. He said, he told the Corinthians, you know, I messed up before. And at one point he says, uh, let's see if I can find it. He said, why do you think I would be here risking my life? Oh, Julia at the counter? Yes. Um, why do you think I keep risking my neck in this dangerous work? I look death in the face practically every day I live. Do you think I'd do this if I wasn't convinced of your resurrection and mine as a guaranteed by the resurrected Messiah, Jesus? And then he says another time, you know, I wasn't perfect. I messed up too. I wasn't Jesus, one of Jesus's favorites, you know, and I think I like that he wasn't going there and in his teaching trying to say, oh, I was the best, you know, listen to me because I was Jesus's right hand man. I was his favorite. I know everything, you know, because he very well could have. I don't know. They didn't have text messages. Not like they would have known if he was <laughs> word on the street. I don't know. I don't know. They would have known if he was the favorite or not but I think it was humbling of him to say that's one of the things that always gives me hope like I mean these are the you know I mean Paul and these are the people that we look up to and we think wow you know right like that's what I want to be like and then he's saying well I'm not perfect you know I'm not Jesus mm -hmm. you go oh I could do better than yeah <laughs> right <laughs> right um, like, yeah, I'll never be perfect, but I mean, look, there are like real life examples here of people who yeah. did do bad things, mm -hmm. um, but yet were able to do so much for the, the glory of God and for the, you know, spreading the gospel message. And you know, so, I mean, we can do those things, you know, we're, um, we're also given that chance. Right. You know, Paul, when he was Saul, he persecuted the Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was there and Steve and was martyred. Yeah. So he can clearly look back to a previous life where he has absolutely nothing to boast about. Not that any of us do, but even after he was turned to Paul and the scales were cleared from his eyes and he saw clearly what his calling was in Romans, he said, Oh, what a wretched man I am. Mm -hmm. And he's referring to, the, the, the spiritual battles we all face, how sin, sin uh, gets the best of every single one of us. And we, it's a daily struggle to overcome sin in our hearts and our minds. And even Paul, what a great champion of our faith, it openly admits he does what he doesn't want to do. And he can't seem to do the things he does want to do. Right. So that, that should give each of us a sense of a hope that, you know, whether it was David who was a murderer or an adulterer or whether it was Moses who was a murderer, God can use us in his ministry. To bring in another hope floats, hope floats quote. The, it, um, did I say this one already? If not, I'm going to say it again. It's a, it's a good one. Beginnings are scary. Endings are usually sad, but it's the middle that counts the most. You need to remember that. When you find yourself at the beginning, just give hope a chance to float up. And as Christians, middle is not the time that matters. Middles are what we are just our hanging out time. It counts as, as a Christian how we live our life, but it is just our short period of time to until we get our to our eternal life but i do like that it's you know when you find yourself at the beginning just give hope a chance to float up you know, there's so many times that we're just 
stuck. And you know, right now when we're in this eternal Groundhog's Day, we have to just uh. have a chance to float up. And, and we all want it our own just, time and not God's right. time. Not God's time. But it's God's time. Sometimes I wish, I think that we wish away certain times that are difficult or trying, such mm -hmm. as this. Like, I wish this would end so we could get on to what we right. want to get on. Mm -hmm. Be back to a normal or a new normal. But we wish things away, but there's a purpose that God has in that, that middle part. And right. we have to trust that and remember right. that. And it away and not miss the opportunities that he gives us you know it makes me think of um like i i love my children more than anything but that whole infant stage is not my favorite stage <laughs> 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 I, I there are so many times i can think of when i you know my my kids were in that little the infant stage and you know they're not sleeping and i i was exhausted and i just wanted that time to pass and just get through it and then when I look back on it it's like that's time I'm never gonna get yeah. again like they'll never be that little again I'll never have that chance to hold them you know in that way and um, you know so like I think some I think sort of like uh, Celia you were saying about this virus I mean you know we want to wish it away and we want to wish and and it sucks <laughs> there's no question right. but but maybe there is some sort of good in it or that we can find in it in the meantime. Um, you know, I mean, I think there are things that's teaching us like, yeah, um, slow down. I don't know that the church has ever been so open to doing things virtually, like finding ways to connect online. Um, and, and I'm really glad that we're doing that now. Like we're seeing faces that we might not see otherwise, um, or like our virtual communion. I mean, that's something that we never really considered as I mean, not just First Presbyterian, but like the PCUSA in general, and I think most mainline churches, you know, we never considered virtual communion. And now it's something that we, we are doing and offering, and I think that means that more people can celebrate it. So, you know, there really are these kind of small blessings along the way that we just have to look for and, you know, and, and um, be, be conscious of. I think prior to this outbreak and the lockdowns that we've all experienced we had plenty of activities that were in our lives that we honored and those activities did not allow us to be still and know god mm -hmm. um, and if anybody asks, well why don't you do this you say well I've, I've already got so many things i need to honor so many obligations this has really removed a lot of obligations for folks and i think it has opened up uh more time uh, to, to pursue some of the things like more Bible study or prayer or bringing in spiritual disciplines that we've never been able to tackle just because we felt so overwhelmed by everything else that we're doing. Um, now, that doesn't mean that we take our time that's now more idle and we do those things. <laughs> we, we, we find a rec more recreational th things, but I think we, we, we no longer have as many excuses not to do those things. And, um, you know, that, that would be a good, um, what, it's not a new year's resolution. It's a COVID resolution. <laughs> I mean, besides be the 15 pounds on my backside, I love quarantine. But I can't say that I've, I've done more than I used to. Um, but I sure don't have a good reason for not. And so that's, you know, one thing that we could all do is just challenge ourselves to a higher level of, of spirituality and faith walk. Definitely. You know, I think some of it too, it says a lot like, you know, if we get up and watch church online, it's by our choice and nobody else knows that we were there. You know, when we do that, if we do that, um, there's so much accountability when we're all together, which is wonderful. But uh, sometimes it's it's about making sure that you know you're seen, you did do your part, and that you're present physically. And there's been a whole lot more personal accountability, I think, with some of it. Kind of like you're saying that 
it's not that you maybe don't spend all your time doing it, but you don't have a reason not to do it more than you did before. So there's been a lot more, I think, personal accountability to take time to put myself in the Bible or take time to read a, a book that I might not have if I didn't have a Wednesday night group or do something a little bit extra. I mean, I get dressed on Sunday morning, so that's a bonus. <laughs> but it's still a choice to do that, but it'll, it'll, it'll be nice when we're all together, but kind of to your point, there has been a lot more personal accountability to, I think, build my relationship and with my kids too, you know, outside of whatever small group that it, that it was a time that we were allowed to do that together that we might not have been able to do before. I think you tried to say something earlier. We were all talking at the same time. You know what it was? <laughs> oh, who? Susan. Hmm? Earlier, we we were all talking. I think you tried to say something at the same time, and I think we cut you off. Um, I... The only thing I remember saying, thinking, was that I agree with Ty that I seem to see in Revelation 21 that the new heaven will go back to the Garden of Eden as God intended it. And I wonder if it will just be a perfect earth again with perfect flawless bodies and complete understanding, and that will be heaven. So. I think it's neat to imagine. I'm getting a signal. I'm getting a signal that my connection is not stable. So you may not have heard all of that. We heard we, we, yes. The video's sketchy, but we heard your voice. Yes. OK. Well, you know, that's one of the mixed blessings of living at the backside of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were also talking about um, that we'll, our bodies will be healed and that we won't struggle with the same illnesses and things. And um, I know you're having your knee replacement surgery Friday, so you'll be running and all that after that. So <laughs> we're pretty for that for sure. I will be. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yes, I am uh, scheduled for Friday morning for a new knee. I'm not looking forward to it, but uh, it's needed. And maybe I'll be at least walking better, if not running, Seal. I, I don't <laughs> know about running. We'll see. <laughs> not for myself. But walking would be wonderful, right? Walking will be great, and uh, I'm looking forward to heaven and a new body, and I have jokingly said for a long time, I hope when they're giving out new bodies, I get a thin one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Stacy, go ahead. You, I've talked more than I should have. <laughs> I feel like I do that too. Um, I, was, I, I think it was one of the kids that actually said something not too long ago when we were talking about what, what heaven would be like. Oh, they listened to some of the, the book with me in the car and just the description of what it would be like for each of us and, you know, what the environment would be like. You know, it's cool to wonder. It's cool to think about it. And they're like, well, don't you ever worry about it? I was like, oh, that's the one thing in my world I don't worry about is the truth is, it's cool to think about that I don't care what the environment is. All I know is what I understand is I'm, I'm going to be like beyond anything I could have ever imagined. And that sounds pretty great. So as neat as it is to imagine what heaven must be like and what our, our bodies must be like, I'm promised an eternity better than anything I've ever experienced here. So I don't really care. <laughs> but, I, I'm supposed to imagine it to be like, I just know it's there and it's, it's, you know, where I'd want to be. 
I, I think the emphasis will not be on ourselves. The right. emphasis will be on God yeah. and 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 praising Him and uh, serving Him. Uh, you know, there's I've often heard other Christians say it started in a garden and it'll end in a garden. If you read New Jerusalem, it looks like a, a garden in that it has a river flowing from the throne out into um, and, and city paved with gold and all, all of that imagery. Um, you know, I was looking in back in Romans chapter eight, trying to find where it talked about creation groaning uh, for its new existence, but it, it, it does talk about, it says, but um, for creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Um, and talks about the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption of the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. But, so we see. Um, for the first, so anyhow, it's just talking about how we all, uh, creation itself is groaning for the new earth. Hey, can I call you back in a little bit? I'm in a video Bible study. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I love that passage, too. Um, I actually... Uh, read this at Martha Stockard's graveside service this mm. past uh, couple of days. It was on Monday. And because I was thinking about, you know, that the phrase, the, the bondage to decay, you know, I mean, that's something that we are all subject to in these mortal bodies that we all decline, we all decay, you know, and, um, but in the, the next life, we'll be free from that and, you know, and whole again and, um, and kind of like Stacy was saying, you know, maybe we, we can't imagine that, but it's, I mean, it's so beyond our imaginations that, um, it's, it's like, you know, not even something to worry about, but just kind of rest assured in that hope. He's got this. That's what I yeah. think. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For, for sure. Mm hmm Right. You know, it's one of those things like we talk about, like, you know, um, uh, we, we were talking about certainty at the beginning, you know, that we don't, we don't know anything for certain, but in a way we do. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, a sure hope and a certain hope, even if we don't know exactly what it will look like and exactly how it will be, it's, it's still a, a sure and certain hope. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we know we will be in the presence yeah. of the Lord, and that's all we need to know. It will be wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like it says, death swallowed by triumphant life. Who got the last word? Oh, death. Oh, death. Who's afraid of you now? Mm. <laughs> oh, where is your sting? Yeah. Right. Actually, that's in 15. You're, you're reading uh, Corinthians. the message, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, oh. it's the message. And, and we thought that Shakespeare quoted that. <laughs> no, it was Paul. <laughs> <laughs> it was Paul in the, in the message. First, first Corinthians, Shakespeare plagiarized. It's often read. I thought Shakespeare and uh, Hamilton. I think you read it maybe at Sylvia Showalter's. I probably did. It's sort of a go-to. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, powerful and neat at those uh -huh. times. Yes. Well, I'm kind of skipping ahead, but and maybe this is the counselor in me and that touchy-feely part that I sometimes... <laughs> After chapter 16 verse 14 it says let all that you do be done in love mm. like given you have instructions like to stay strong and to recognize 
how you should uh, behave and how you can share and just be on the alert for these things that are, that are happening. But let all that you do be done in love. Mm -hmm. However, or whatever you might do. I love that just before that, you know, it says stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong. Cause I think, you know, I mean like doing everything that, you know, that we do in love. I mean, it takes strength, mm -hmm. you know, and takes courage. It, it's a lot easier to act out of fear and out of anger and just go with that sort of snap judgment and yell and get mad. It, it takes a lot more strength to, um, to act in love and act in patience and, mm -hmm. you know, to be kind. Yes. A lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the chapter, which I'm not going to go into, but I'll save it. Courtney, you can use it. Okay. For, um, <laughs> something else some other it goes in talking about getting money from the congregation so that is <laughs> we have stewards anything. coming up so. yes that, you can use that for stewardship that is not anything that i want to go into <laughs> i don't know how the it goes in for to paul talking about that he's going to go on and collect money and it's like well that's not my <laughs> my cup of tea, so I'm just gonna yes, yeah, to that me. Part. yes. Mm -hmm. I can handle that yeah. so but I thought that was a pretty good yes yeah, a beautiful a good, chapter. good chapter about hope and the resurrection and the encouragement and the promise that we have and mm -hmm. that we have to look forward to Goodness, if we don't have hope right now, we don't have much, so. Right, exactly. Uh, the message ends with, with all this going on for us, my dear friends, stand your ground. Don't hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. And I can say with 100% certainty that I have never left a Sunday school class or a Wednesday night or a church service or closed my Bible or a devotion and said, well, that was a waste of time and effort. <laughs> so there is, I can say with 100% confidence that nothing we do for him is a waste of our time or effort. And if we give it time and let hope float up a little bit, that's just what we need and with everything going on and questioning and to wear a mask to not wear a mask to mm -hmm. corona's fake and made up to it's real and scary and whatever we have that encouragement we have that knowledge we have that that promise that we have god and that is we have eternal life in that is the one thing that we know to be 100% truth and that is what we need to know for a fact. You're recording. Right. Yeah, during this time and every time. Right. As you were saying that, you know, like, you know, never leaving church or Bible study or closing your Bible, you know, it's, it's never been a waste of time. It, made me think about like going to the gym and how so many times I'm like, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to go. I, I just, you yes. know, hope and complain. And then I'm never upset or never disappointed that I went. And I always right. feel better after I've been. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. I think sometimes with like Bible study and with church and, you know, like there are those mornings, you know, back when we were going in person, there are those mornings where you just think, oh, I just, don't want to put the effort in today. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then we right. get like, oh, this is yeah. exactly what I need. No, I said after. I didn't say there's times that I don't want right, right, to yeah. go to. Yeah, the leading up it's is the after. 
but it's that feeling like afterwards it's like oh I feel better now and I feel yes glad that I did it but yeah it's like sometimes it's the leading up is the like right yeah yes there are times that getting into a room of right. 10 15 and 16 year olds is not so <laughs> right. make me so excited but afterwards <laughs> I never I hope your your children are not in the room Stacy because I yeah. always want to go see them okay, good. yeah they're not in the room <laughs> okay, but afterwards I'm always glad yes oh that was I'm trying to remember the scripture that we've used with our Sunday school teachers like those who refresh others will themselves also be refreshed I can't mm -hmm. remember off the top of my head um, but I try to remember that like I've said before teaching rotation was like a re-education for me like that was important like for me to to know what I was talking about before I could go in and try to talk to a bunch of kids because they're going to have mm -hmm. questions and I needed to oh. be prepared. That was a refreshing experience for myself. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. just you are fed in your individual classes. You, you can get it in other ways. When you commit to share with other people, you yourself are also refreshed. Mm -hmm. in that faith. Yes. It's sort of like when we witness to others, we witness to ourselves. I mean, like, you know, that something about retelling those stories affirms our own faith. Yeah. Well, Molly, thank you so much for leading us tonight. You are very welcome. I'm sorry that I um, have not been in more Wednesday nights. No, no, no worries. Oh. You can see my children are real. At it. <laughs> it's been so nice to real people to connect to like all through the summer yes. yes definitely yes it was nice to see everyone's faces next summer Ty's just going to take it single-handedly right yes that's what I hear <laughs> that'll be great well, we we appreciate um everybody joining and Molly thank you for leading us and um anything anybody wants to lift up before we close Susan's surgery on Friday um, and your recovery and I know this is a difficult time to be in the hospital and then coming home with recovery and I know your family is going to help a lot so we'll be praying for you. Yeah. Well thank you. I will appreciate it. I know I will feel those those prayers. How is Barbara Fowler? I'm not heard an update. She's uh, been getting much better. She's home now. Oh, good. We give thanks for that. But um, yeah, she had a rough few days. Yeah. Anything else we want to lift up? Of course, Eloise's family. Mm -hmm. My sister has uh, the coronavirus, and she um, is not feeling great. She's had it now for almost two weeks and can't seem to get rid of it. Oh, my goodness. Yes, so her fever keeps going up. I mean, she's at home. She's not in the hospital, but That's she does good. have a heart condition. And oh my gracious! So, is she having to quarantine from family and all that kind of stuff? Uh, well, my nephew has it too, but he has no. Miss Milder. Yes, he. I mean, he's been perfectly fine, but yeah, she's been staying, yeah, in her room and staying away from her husband and my other nephew because they, but they do not have it. Mm. So. That's hard in one house. What's her? What's your sister's? Name? Carrie. Carrie. Mm -hmm. Was there any any other prayer request? I don't know. I, I I just I'm like everybody. I'm I'm watching what's going on in our country, and there just seems to be uh, so many things te uh, tearing away at the fabric of society and just um i know god is sovereign and i know he's got everything under control uh, as as he sees fit but uh um i know that the solution ultimately is that we would all look back to our north star mm -hmm. and if we would all move closer to god we would all be moving closer to each other and we would be aligning ourselves um more with god there would be less 
mm-hmm. animosity and a less division. And uh, I know that's the solution. I just don't feel like the world is ready for that solution. I just wish that, that, um, that something would happen that would awaken um, the spiritual element within mm-hmm. each person uh, to bear the image of God more so and then share God's love with others. Just to me, I, I, I think it's going to require a revival, honestly. Mm. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful for it. It kind of goes back to, you know, everything you do, do in love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else we want to lift up? Would anybody like to pray us out? Still will. Oh. <laughs> Oh, better be comfortable on that couch, Ty. I've been there before. (laughs) I would love to. I really would. Um, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time and for this lesson and this specific scripture that you would just help us to carry it with us um, in the days ahead and amidst so much uncertainty and difficult times in this world. Um, I pray against all those difficulties and we pray for your strength and your guidance um, through these times and for just your love to shine through us and that we would show that love to everyone that we encounter. We pray for all those who are sick, who are suffering, going through difficult times. We ask that you would be with our congregation and our community and our country. In all these things we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Molly. Right, I, you're yeah. welcome, Ty. I appreciate you wearing a Tennessee orange shirt just for me today. You know what? I actually like uh, Tennessee orange, uh, and I like it 364 days out of the year. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Nice to lie, Ty. <laughs> no, I, I, okay with it until they play Alabama. No, that's right. In Alabama, we have a a saying that says, hate all teams in orange. Think about it. You've got UT, Florida, Mm -hmm. uh, and most importantly, Auburn. I know. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm good with wearing orange. Um, I've always thought uh, highly of of the team, and and, uh, they have a good fan base. Right, they do. uh, I just don't, I don't like it as much of these as the, as the school in Tuscaloosa. That's all. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. Well, y'all have a good night. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.